Lord. Give us confidence, like Jesus, to trust in your presence and to know that in all our wildernesses, you will be faithful to come to our aid. O God, may the words from my lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our salvation. Amen. So what are you doing for your Lenten journey? I know some of you were here Wednesday night and received the ashes. A few members even came to the glitter service to receive ashes. We began our journey with ashes on our forehead. As Heather was talking to the children about giving something up for Lent, I remember when I was serving at Westwood Lutheran Church on Rainbow, uh, close to KU Med Center, I decided that I was going to be really vigilant and give up coffee, chocolate, and lower my carb intake. The next day, the council president came to me and said, Pastor, I really think that's a bad idea. And it only lasted one day. So since then, I tried to take something on, such as cleaning out my closet and uh, donating it to various organizations. I've tried to take on more time in prayer and in study. This year, there are three things that I'm doing. One is I am a joining a online book club uh, focusing on the city as my monastery. It's a delightful book written by Father Richard Carter and talking with others about this has been helpful for me. I've also been using an online pro meditation program, Pray As You Go, um, which I really found very powerful. In fact, I came early to church this morning and sat in my office and listened to the meditation before service. And I've started a ministry with a prayer partner when we pray for each other daily and join together in our life as colleagues and as ministers. The question that the book has lifted up for this week is, what do you seek? As we enter into any church season or any church community or activity, we need to ask the question, what do you seek? Yesterday, a few of us gathered here at Koinia Hall to talk about what we desire and seek for our congregation. I think in Salem's case, the members and the visitors seek of how to live together as family and the mercy of God and our beloved siblings. Today in our Old Testament lesson, we hear that story of when Adam and Eve were together and they were living a wonderful life in the Garden of Eden. But the tempter came to them and said, you know, what, what can you eat? What can you do? And then the woman told the boundaries what was available. And, and there was so very much. But there was one tree that they couldn't eat from. And they looked at the fruit of that tree. And the snake, the tempter, came to her and said, you will not die. God is fooling you. You can eat it. And so she does. And she shares it with Adam. And then they see. In a way, they do die because they are not a part of what God's desire was for them. Temptation faces us each and every day. And when we give in to temptation, it turns us away from God and not what God desires us to be. In our gospel reading today, we hear the story of Jesus. He has just been baptized, and the Spirit takes him out into the wilderness, where he is for 40 days and 40 nights. And the tempter, the devil, Satan, comes to him and tells him, you could have it all if you just, just listen to me. You could have everything. But the path by which Jesus moves is not that, not of lordship, that is to be satanic. 
It's one that could make for him to own what we desire, what God desires. It's because even though Jesus is in the wilderness, he is never alone, even when he is tempted. When we are tempted in our lives, we need to always remind ourselves that God is with us and that we can resist and we can turn. Remember when I was teaching a Bible study during Lent, one of the members was from an evangelical background and said, yeah, Lent's the time you either turn or burn. We need to turn towards God. Sometimes we don't always know the direction. We're tempted to be fearful and afraid of what God is calling us to do. What do we seek? Here at Salem, we seek opportunities for our youth, for our children, and for all our siblings to grow in faith and to know the love of God. We seek that our church community can learn and grow from our past and find a way forward. We seek God's angels to carry us through times of difficulty and challenge. We seek together, not alone, we seek and we will find the gifts we need to move forward as beloved children of God. Do not be afraid. Let your hearts be strengthened by God's mercy and grace. The truth is that there are a lot of snakes or temptations in our paths. There are things that pull our attention away from God and falling and not following God's way. Our job is to notice the temptations, to walk around them, to keep our focus on God, and to make it together. Life can change in a New York minute, but know this for sure, God is present in every minute. God's angels are there to tend to our needs. On Wednesday night, the choir is saying, we are not alone. Adam and Eve were not alone, even though they gave in to temptation. They were not left alone. Jesus was not alone in the wilderness, and we are never alone. That is the good news for today, tomorrow, and forever. So tend to your Lenten journey. Pay attention to the paths that you take, the directions that you go. Seek to turn to God and away from the temptations that take you away from God. Be guided by his love and mercy and grace. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen.